It is no small thing for a cappella groups like the Shabbatones or the Inspiration, whom you'll hear from later in this program, to come together in harmony amidst COVID restrictions and social distancing, and indeed everything that sought to tear us apart last year. It's both amazing and quite moving to see student performing artists come together and make something beautiful. In many ways, this was Dr. King's message, that we find a way to come together, and this is key, come together and make something new. It means a lot that you've chosen to join us for the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Interfaith Commemorative. Usually, we'd be in Bodek Lounge or Irvine Auditorium on campus, gathering together in person. And while that's not the case this year, I believe you're still in store for a special and inspiring program. You've already gotten a taste of the gifted performing arts groups who are featured. We'll also be awarding this year's Community Service Awards to an amazing group of individuals who've been blessing our community for a long time. Congratulations. We'll also be hearing from our university president, Dr. Amy Gutman, our university provost, Dr. Wendell Pritchett. And by the way, we're all very grateful for your leadership through this difficult season. We'll also hear from the director of the African American Resource Center, Dr. Valerie Allen, and an inspiring group of students from our religious communities on campus. For a keynote address, after a year when so much change came about because of strong leadership around the country by young people, we thought it fitting that we hear from well, students. So in a few minutes, you'll hear from three truly inspiring members of the Penn community, Mike, Kamal, and Lauren. I want to give a special thanks to Arsenal Media, to Patty Burchett, Steve Kosher, Sana Saeed, Mark Bendis, the team at African American Resource Center, Diane Leslie, Joanne Mitchell, Laurie McCall, the MLK exec team, and all who helped to make this virtual gathering possible. Again, thank you for joining us. And it's my great honor to turn it over to someone whom I believe leads in that very spirit of harmony and positive change. Dr. Amy Gutman. Thank you, Chaz. I know I speak for so many across the Penn community when I say you are a rock and anchor in the stormiest of times. We so appreciate your presence every day at Penn. When contemplating a country besieged or a people beset, I recall the unequivocal words of the prophet Jeremiah, do what is right and just, rescue the victims from the hands of their oppressors, do not wrong or oppress, and do not shed innocent blood. These are foundational principles of a just and civil society. When Dr. Martin Luther King spoke of the beloved community, he added something more. Even in the darkest hours, the light of possibility still shines for those willing to look for it and work for it. We saw it in the tens of thousands and then the many millions who marched across this country and around the world. We saw it in those who stood up and kneel down for the cause of racial justice. We span generations. We are of every race, nationality, and class. And we stand up together as one, steadfast in our desire for society based on justice, equal opportunity, and respect for the value and dignity of all. We see the spirit manifest right here on campus and in Philadelphia. So today we come together to celebrate all who exemplify the spirit of love and caring and community service. I'm so proud of our student speakers who have already established themselves as leading lights of their generation. And they will speak powerfully and poignantly about their visions for creating a better and brighter future for us all. You will hear about the inspiring work of those being honored today who dare to dream and who also know that faith without works is dead. I applaud each and every one of tonight's honorees for being servant leaders. In the darkness, you have brought light. In a time of isolation and despair, you have fostered community and hope. Congratulations. Although today we cannot be together in person, we are united in spirit. 
We condemn the injustice even as we celebrate the journey that has brought us this far. Our dedication to building a more perfect union will carry us through the days ahead. My gratitude to each of you for helping make Penn and all our communities better places. Working together, we will continue to make strides towards becoming a just society and yes, a blessed community. Thank you, Dr. Gutman and everyone else a part of this special commemoration of Dr. Martin Luther King. What has Dr. Martin Luther King done for me and for my life? Being from a small rural town in Southern Louisiana, a state comprised of a terrible history of racism, it truly frightens me to think about what my life could have been like growing up there hadn't Dr. Martin Luther King ever existed. But because of him, my black family were able to eat at whatever restaurant we want. We're able to sit down wherever we want. We're able to walk down whatever street that we want because of a fearless Dr. Martin Luther King. I've played basketball my entire life and not only has this sport brought me to one of the most prestigious universities in the world, but, and with Dr. Martin Luther King's help, it has also allowed me to build lifelong relationships with my teammates who look nothing like me. And now I can say that I have sisters of all races. And if Dr. Martin Luther King were here with me today, face to face, I would tell him that the young people of this nation are continuing his work day in and day out. We will never stop exposing the wrongs done to black bodies. His legacy and his spirit will continue to live through us and others. So thank you, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. What does MLK mean to me? Well, as a mixed race man with a black father and a white mother, reconciling my own racial identity has been a complicated road. My existence transcends racial boundaries and wouldn't have been possible if my parents had lived just a few decades earlier before Dr. King's work was done. And in that spirit of defiance of the norm, I lived the majority of my childhood unexamined in spite of the recurring role of race uh, in my life and all of our lives. And yet age brought more adverse experiences, more questions, more sleepless nights. And by the time I was in late high school, I found that pursuing social and cultural change was a top priority for me in uh, all of my pursuits. And yet I also found that questions about my racial identity continued to surface. I found that race was informing my decisions and guiding my movements. I found that I tended to be more of a bridge between people and not a foundational support as a mixed race man. And while I value that, I didn't necessarily choose it, nor did I choose the many questions that I've grappled with my entire life. And so when I think back to Dr. King, I am reminded and inspired by the amount of cooperation and intelligence and dedication it takes to pursue his dream. But I'm also reminded of how race has continued to shape my life as a privileged mixed race man in the 21st century, let alone the continued role of racism in this country. And so I would encourage myself and all of you to not only appreciate Dr. King and remember him, but also find inspiration in his story and try to learn the unique role that each of us can play in pursuing his dream today. And in that way, we can make sure that his legacy continues to live and is not forgotten with the past. What does MLK mean to me? I feel like that should be a question I ask myself more often. It's easy to read about his life and his impact in my high school history books or check out a biography or two, but looking at him through that lens makes him and his legacy seem far off and distant a notion that could not be further from the truth. 
I find MLK's legacy to have one of the most powerful impacts on my life. My sister is a beautiful African-American little girl that my family adopted when I was about 10 years old. Without MLK, would something like that even be possible? It's impossible to know that answer. But what I do know is that I am grateful. Because of MLK, my sister has the opportunity to achieve the same things that I have. Because of MLK, she can feel safe in our home, our community, and our family. Because of MLK, my sister does not need to worry that her skin color will inhibit her happiness the way that it may have during MLK's lifetime. And at the end of the day, if she is safe, and if she is happy, then so am I. So because of this, my gratitude for Martin Luther King Jr., his life, his legacy, and his love for those around him is truly, truly immeasurable. Diane Leslie, coordinator of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Symposium on Social Change. For some time now, we've been confronted with a lot of bad news and people getting caught doing bad things. Well, the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Community Recognition Awards was designed to celebrate and honor those who've gotten caught doing excellent volunteer work in the community. Dr. King said, an individual has not started to live until he can rise above the narrow confines of his individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity. And the following honorees have taken those words to heart. 
Undergraduate student honoree, Hakeem Ellison, class of 22, is a political science major, minoring in urban education in the College of Arts and Sciences. Hakeem is a first-generation low-income student born and raised in West Philadelphia. He dedicates his time and energy to making positive changes in this area that he calls home. His service with the West Philadelphia community began when he enrolled in an academically based community service course, ABCS, entitled Music in Urban Spaces and its affiliate, Music for Social Change. As part of ABCS, Ellison worked for a year at Lee Elementary School, facilitating activities with school day drama and band classes, as well as with after school music programs. He has also worked with Penn's Summer Mentorship Program, preparing and organizing events for the high school participants and co-producing a 100-page handbook of tips and resources for navigating the college application process called College Knowledge as well as Music for Social Change, mentoring Lee students in Musicopia, an after-school orchestral program. Ellison has continued to work in various peer mentor programs that provide support programs and services to first-generation and or low-income students. Ellison identified Dr. King's quote, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? As the inspiration for his work and continues to prove his commitment to the betterment of the West Philadelphia community. Graduate student honoree Ashley Betts, a Meckler Family Endowed Fellow and first year MBA candidate at the Wharton School is Vice President of Social Impact on Wharton Graduate Association's Cluster Council. Leading a fundraising effort to tackle homelessness, Betts had fellow first-year MBA students work with nonprofits to raise money and hand out care packages to those in need. She had them partner with the Philadelphia Independent School District to lead a virtual career symposium for high school students. Betts serves on the board of Rebuilding Together, which transforms low-income homeowners' lives, revitalizing their Belmont community. She serves on the Dean's MBA Advisory Board and helped create Wharton's first academically-based community service MBA course with the Penn Netter Center where students and faculty work with the West Philadelphia community to help solve critical community problems. As director of Wharton's African American MBA Association, her initiative supports Black-owned businesses and also has an Adopt a Family for Christmas program. Additionally, Betts co-founded Wharton Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Consultants. Ashley Betts demonstrates a sustained commitment to community involvement throughout her personal and professional life, making a significant impact in Philadelphia and Penn. She is a good neighbor to our beloved community. Staff honoree, Dr. Batsy Rive Buzawabaya, or Dr. Batsy, as she is affectionately known to colleagues, is a trusted partner and advocate across the campus of the University of Pennsylvania. She is a psychologist and the Director of Outreach and Prevention Services at CAPS, Counseling and Psychological Services. She has consistently demonstrated her commitment to centering values of equity, inclusivity, and social justice. Originally from Zimbabwe, Africa, Dr. Batsy's clinical interests include exploring issues related to minority mental health, body image concerns, sexual trauma, racial and ethnic identity development, and social justice counseling. At CAPS, 
Dr. Batsy is a valuable member of the Eating Concerns Team and the Sexual Trauma Treatment Outreach and Prevention Team. She is a facilitator of the Staff Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee and was part of the Intercultural Leadership Program, which received the Models of Excellence Award. She also co-facilitates restorative circles at Penn. Dr. Batsy has supported collaborations that center holistic wellness and access to culturally responsive resources. Student groups such as Black Graduate Women's Association, Sister Sister, and ASAP Abuse and Sexual Assault Prevention are just a few of the many that have benefited from her generous counsel and active participation in their programming and outreach efforts. Judith B. Roden Honoree and Penn Graduate School of Education alum, Gina Pambianchi, serves as the community engagement librarian for the Van Pelt Dietrich Library at the University of Pennsylvania. In her role, she is responsible for developing partnerships with public school libraries and community organizations. In less than a year, Pam Bianchi expanded the scope of Penn Library's community outreach program by introducing new initiatives such as the Mirrors Collection, where her team of students select books for local elementary schools. Other new outreach programs include Connection Collection, Advocacy for Librarians, Adult Literacy, health literacy, and the Unearthing Literacy Project. Before coming to Penn, Pam Bianchi taught and managed a school library in Belize City, Belize. She worked in collaboration with a team to develop an extended day program for 20 youth in under-resourced communities. She facilitated student research and story time instructed small group and one-on-one -on -one reading classes for students with learning disabilities, and established a weekly girls' empowerment group focused on self-esteem and gender-related issues. Pam Bianchi also collaborated to establish an adult education curriculum at Hope Partnership for Education, a North Philadelphia nonprofit. There, she became more cognizant of the relationship between literacy and health care. This led her to pursue a nursing degree and ultimately a position as a registered nurse on an oncology transplant unit at Einstein Medical Center. Our first community honoree, Sarah Lomax Reese, is the president and CEO of WURD Radio LLC, which is the only black owned media company in Pennsylvania. WURD 900 AM has been under the leadership of Sarah for more than nine years. A graduate of the University of Pennsylvania and Columbia University Graduate School of Journalism, Lomax Reese made a significant impact working on the glaucoma awareness campaign with the city of Philadelphia. The campaign sought to provide free glaucoma screenings to African Americans, as well as to enroll eligible patients in a genetic study. She was passionate and creative in designing the campaign and hosted live coverage of a screening event along with interviewing African-American glaucoma physicians at Penn. The campaign was enormously successful. A large majority cited their trust and familiarity with WURD Radio and with Lomax Reese as their main reason for participating in the campaign. Lomax Reese has received numerous awards, including the Woman of Substance Award from the National Medical Association, the Tree of Life Award from the Wellness of You, 
and HealthQuest magazine, which she co-founded, received the Beacon of Light Award from the Congressional Black Caucus for outstanding health coverage. In addition, Sarah was recognized as one of the 100 people to watch by Business Philadelphia magazine. And in 2010, she was selected for the Women of Distinction Award given by the Philadelphia Business Journal. Most recently, Sarah received the 2012 PICO Power to the Community Award given by the National Coalition of 100 Black Women of Pennsylvania. Dr. Cassandra Graves is Associate Director of Evelyn Graves Drama Productions, Director of Evelyn Graves School of Performing Arts, and Administrator of Evelyn Graves Ministries Church Incorporated. A Doctor of Divinity and Theology, she has effectively utilized her powerful communication skills to mentor thousands of families and reinstituted community outreach by empowering resources with free food and fresh vegetables, feeding 43,200 underserved families. A West Philadelphia native, she includes culture, education, spirituality, science, technology, engineering, math, and the performing arts on her list of life-sustaining services targeting youth with opportunities and experiences of a lifetime. In 2011, Dr. Graves was installed as Executive Assistant Pastor at Evelyn Graves Ministries Church and has received several awards, including citations from Mayor Michael Nutter, Travel Agent of the Year from Philadelphia Black Travel Expo and the NAACP, all acknowledging her leadership quality and positive impact within the community. The Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Executive Planning Committee congratulates all of this year's honorees. Please continue your good works. Greetings, friends. I know you join me in thanking all our presenters and especially our honorees this year. And let's face it, the past year has been, by any definition, unlike any other. The MLK Interfaith Dialogue, a long-standing pen tradition, has always sought to both celebrate our diverse community and highlight the challenges that we face, both here and beyond our campus. Our program this year, by its virtual nature, has clearly highlighted a key challenge, remaining connected while physically distant. But what's remarkable is that we also have a lot to celebrate, our resilience and adaptability, and a newfound understanding of how to make profound connections, creative, intellectual, emotional, with people thousands of miles away. We are also very fortunate to have so many members of the Penn community working on the front lines of the pandemic, keeping colleagues and strangers alike safe, often at great personal risk. Of course, the pandemic has been only one facet of this tumultuous time. We've witnessed more unjust, incomprehensible killings of black and brown people, mass protests on a scale unseen since the 1960s, riots and heavily armed responses, and an election that has arguably spotlighted our divisions as much as our unity. Perhaps above all, 2020 has shown, once again, that racism and inequality continue to define life in America. One can plausibly argue that they are definitional to the very idea of America. One term, the term structural racism, was probably not common during Dr. Dr. King's time. But he knew, better than most, that inequality was, in important ways, the scaffolding of our nation. True compassion is more than flinging a coin to a beggar, he once said. It comes to see that an edifice which produces beggars needs restructuring. I believe we have, at long last, arrived at this critical moment of restructuring. 2021 is a year to which we look forward. As a nation, we have a remarkable opportunity to build a better, more fair, more just society. And we have leadership committed to doing so. It's true our system gives outsized influence to those who fear change and seek to prevent progress. But those who marched with Dr. King for civil rights also faced cruelty, intransigence, and the daunting shadow of inertia in the fight against injustice. They prevailed, and so will we. I'm sure you've heard of the power of pen. 
The power of Penn derives not from our academic degrees. It flows from our degree of commitment and compassion for one another. Distilled to their essence, protests and pandemics both illustrate something fundamental to humanity, our interconnection. Our lives and our futures are intertwined. Ultimately, we don't succeed when we leave others behind. I look forward to a 2021 filled with shared progress and to seeing you all in person very soon. Thank you for being a part of the Penn community. Wow, wasn't it wonderful hearing the words of our students? The Interfaith program is always one of my favorites. This year was particularly meaningful. I love hearing our students' thoughts, dreams, and plans. Hearing the impact of Dr. King's life on people who weren't even a distant thought during the time he walked the earth is profound. Earlier this year, we welcomed our new Vice Provost for University Life. When she spoke, she talked about being our ancestors' dreams come true. That's what the students are. That's what we all are. We are our ancestors' hopes and dreams. She also challenged us, and I challenge you, to be good ancestors for those who will come after us. Make the decision and perform the actions today that will make life better for our progeny so they will look back and say, we were good ancestors. This evening, I acknowledge our performers, speakers, and impactful honorees for being good ancestors. I have to acknowledge our president, Amy Gutman, our provost, Wendell Pritchett, our EVP, Craig Carneroli, and my supervisor, Vice President for Institutional Affairs, Joanne Mitchell, who make it possible for the symposium to take place. I owe a huge thank you to Colleen Wynn and Darren Tolliver, who chair the MLK Executive Planning Committee, and Diane Leslie, who serves as the symposium coordinator. Also, the volunteers on the planning committee for their dedication to the university and to the realization of Dr. King's ideals and values. This year was very different. Their creativity and motivation to make this symposium happen was spectacular. To the hundreds of volunteers who came out on the day of service on Zoom or otherwise, I thank you for not letting the pandemic hinder your spirit of service. Thank you for helping us to be and for being good ancestors to our beloved community. We have more wonderful and exciting programs to come and I hope you will join us. Finally, as we continue into 2021, may we be a people of hope, a people of peace, a people of love. And as we go into the wonder of the world, may we be granted opportunities to share hope, peace, and love as we continue to work to be good ancestors for the generations to come. Thank you. Let's end this year's interfaith commemoration by holding onto the words from Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. He said that one day we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, thereby transforming our society for the freedom of everyone. May we be willing to work together and may we stay rooted in the resilience of this dream amidst these overwhelming times we live in and know we are not alone in the work of transforming our communities through justice. May we continue to pray together as keepers of this dream. Let us balance taking care of ourselves, our communities, and each other. May we go now into the world daring to dream out loud and willing to struggle together. Go in peace and love.